There are some nations which, while they might be small today, once covered hundreds of thousands or even millions of square kilometres. In this video, we will be looking at a few of those nations. We will only be looking at nations which once had large contiguous territories, so no colonial empires like the UK or Portugal will be featured in this video. One nation which used to be way bigger is the Central European nation of Hungary. While the modern nation of Hungary stretches over only 93,000 square kilometres or 35,000 square miles, slightly smaller than the American state of Maine. Up until 104 years ago, the Kingdom of Hungary, one of the two constituent kingdoms of the Austro-Hungarian Empire, stretched over a land area of 282,000 square kilometres or 109,000 square miles. Covering vast swaths of Eastern Europe and the Balkans, including the entirety of Slovakia, Transylvania which is now part of Romania, as well as southern Poland and parts of Croatia and Serbia. The reason for Hungary's drastic loss in land area in the past century is due to the Treaty of Trianon which seized two thirds of Hungary's land as punishment for it being on the losing side of World War I. 61% of Hungary's at the time population of 20 million people lived on the seized land, causing Hungary's population to drop from 20 million people before the treaty's implementation to 7 million after its implementation. Even today, Hungary only has a population of 9.7 million people, less than half of what its population was in 1918. The second nation we will talk about in this video, Mexico, is still a very large nation, having a land area of 1.9 million square kilometres or 750,000 square miles. To put into perspective how large this is, if placed over a map of Europe, Mexico would stretch all the way from Ireland to Istanbul. However, the Mexican Empire of two centuries ago dwarfed the modern Mexico, stretching from the coastal forests of Northern California in its north to the tropical rainforests of Costa Rica in its south. Its land area of 4.9 million square kilometres or 1.9 million square miles made it two and a half times the size of modern Mexico. The empire first began to decline in 1823 when political instability led to the Central American states declaring independence from the empire. It lost control of its northern province of Texas in 1836 when American settlers in the region successfully waged the War of Independence. It later lost what is now the rest of the American Southwest in 1848 after losing the Mexican-American War. The war started in 1846 when Mexico tried to retake Texas after the United States annexed it. Interestingly, if Mexico were to regain the territories it lost in the Mexican-American War, it would see its GDP jump from $1.4 trillion to a whopping $9 trillion. Instantly going from the 15th largest economy in the world to the 3rd largest economy. If this was to ever happen, the former Southwest United States would make up 83% of the Mexican GDP. The states of California and Texas alone would make up 65%, showing the huge economic disparity between Mexico and the American states which were once part of its territory. Poland is known for being regularly invaded by its neighbours from all sides. Its flat and generally non-mountainous landscape makes it a very easy place for an army to march through, whether it be coming from the east or the west. However, despite its naturally vulnerable geography, there was once a time when Poland was one of the largest and most powerful nations in all of Europe. The Polish-Lithuanian Commonwealth in the early 17th century stretched over a million square kilometres and was home to over 12 million people, making it the second most populous nation in Europe at the time, only behind France. Its land area was three times that of modern Poland and 15 times that of modern Lithuania. It controlled all of Belarus and most of the Baltics except northern Estonia, along with western Ukraine. Despite its vast size, the Commonwealth would begin to see itself decline in the 18th century, surrendering to Sweden in the Great Northern War in 1709 and losing its grip on Prussia. The Great Northern War weakened Poland-Lithuania so much that it became reliant on Russia for its defence. After the 1730s, essentially only serving as a buffer state between Prussia, Russia and Austria. Starting in 1775, the three would begin to partition Poland-Lithuania, collectively seizing more and more of the Commonwealth's land over the next 20 years until by 1795 they had collectively annexed the entire Commonwealth. Other than a brief stint during the Napoleonic Wars, after the partition had been completed, Poland and Lithuania wouldn't see themselves as independent states again until 1918, after the end of the First World War. Sweden is known for a lot of things, mainly for IKEA, but also for its good social programs and stunning scenery. However, one thing Sweden is generally not known for is military strength. Despite this, in the early 18th century, the Swedish Empire had one of the most powerful armies in all of Northern Europe. Winning battles against nations with much larger populations than it, like Poland, Lithuania and Russia. The empire itself was over double the size of modern Sweden. Controlling a portion of Norway, Finland and the Baltics along with what is now St. Petersburg, Russia. 
its control over all these areas allowed it to navally dominate the Baltic Sea. Much like the previously discussed Mexican Empire, however, the Swedish Empire can blame its decline on one of its larger neighbours, losing almost all of its eastern land to Russia. Starting in 1703 with the Russian capture of the fort which is now St. Petersburg during the Great Northern War. Russia also captured Estonia in 1710 although these gains wouldn't be solidified until 1721 when Sweden officially surrendered to Russia after over 20 years of fighting in the Great Northern War. Nearly a century later, in 1808, during the Napoleonic Wars, Russia would again invade Sweden with the support of France and seize Finland. Despite British support, Sweden was unable to fend off the much larger Russian army, leading to its surrendering Finland to Russia in 1809, effectively bringing an end to the Swedish Empire. There are many more nations which used to once have much larger territories other than the four mentioned in this video. If you would like me to discuss some of those other nations, please let me know in the comments and like the video and I will make a part 2.